um, and it's where people are actually trying to explain something that matters to them. And when I was in here um, the day after the opening, I tried to make a note of what they were explaining, and it was pretty fantastic. So one guy is trying to give an insight into anarchist history. Uh, another guy is um, showing us how to uh, pick a lock or jimmy a key. There's a transcendental um, uh, meditation instruction. Uh, there's a, a guy who is talking about um, the hunter-gatherer imperative. Um, another person talking about the need to voluntarily cease having children in order to keep the world's population at a manageable rate. And another person who's interested in talking about reversing um, a high industrialised society. So it's covering a pretty wild range of topics. But they're all uh, speaking from a position of being somewhat dissatisfied with the world and trying to think how we can make it better. Um, sometimes these people could be perceived as kind of crackpots or radicals, but sometimes there's equally really fascinating germs of uh, potential truth you know, within what they're talking about. So the objects that we see here kind of might look really quite common garden to us. We've got, you know, the chest of drawers festooned with uh, stickers, um, which has, have been whitewashed. I don't know, most of us may remember objects like this from our childhood bedrooms, which we customised and tried to assert our own kind of uh, tastes and individuality. Within our, within our bedrooms. Um, but there's also some pretty kooky stuff here going on, like on the polystyrene block um, on the wall there, if you go up and look closely, there's um, three kind of images um, which are sort of m m fakes or mock-ups of human alien sex scenes. Um, so sometimes Dan veers into some territory which is a little bit fruity, um, but he does so intentionally. He's really interested in conspiracy theories and the kind of notion that there's something out there that's different to, um, to us. Um, so particularly with the kind of choice of the video matter, you know, he's really interested in those outsider opinions. Um, some people struggle with the fact that a lot of this material looks a bit grubby. It looks as if it has just been got out of a skip. Um, but what's interesting to think about with Dan is how everything that he does is kind of considered and edited. So nothing, there's nothing actually here that's slapdash. That's nothing that he's just thrown into the room without thinking very, very carefully about what it is, how it may have been treated, whether it's been whitewashed, whether it's been um, sort of augmented, how much of the existing kind of grime and patina of age and use is retained, but also how objects get um, combined together and then collectively how the entire room is laid out. So sometimes this work is uh, perhaps a little bit close to the bone in terms of um, how we live our current consumerist existence. Um, but I find uh, it endlessly fascinating and often laugh out loud funny. Um, and I think that Dan is definitely, while he does have kind of very interesting, serious sort of socio-political investigations, he's also completely into and up for how absurd life can be. One of my favourites, I have to say, is the fantastic um, uh, little uh, combination of the owl lamp uh, daubed with kind of fluoro orange paint with the upside down coat hanger um, and the owl has been given a, like a white uh, kind of art preparator's glove as a kind of nightcap. Um, and the, the uh, uh, clothes hanger has become, as Ron mentions in his text, almost like some kind of antenna where he's trying to kind of channel and pick up uh, some kind of uh, interesting points of, um, you know, uh, communication. And yes, and when you touch uh, or get near to, you've got wonderful uh, effects happening there in terms of um, the body's interrelationship with the object. So does anyone here um, 
have quite a strong response to this work. Is, is anyone kind of uh, thinking, uh, I don't, uh, mm, don't know, 